I want to get back to the editorial about the Eagles and the Anthem Kneelers. Here's the presidential tweet on the cancelling of the White House event. Now, I want to focus just on the last part. Quote, staying in the locker room for the playing of our national anthem is as disrespectful to our country as kneeling. Sorry. Philadelphia's mayor responded with a statement that said, now just part of it here, disinviting them from the White House only proves that our president is not a true patriot, but a fragile egomaniac obsessed with crowd size and afraid of the embarrassment of throwing a party to which no one wants to attend. Joining us now, a former NFL Super Bowl champ and author of Why I Stand, Burgess Owen. All right, give me your take, please, on the president, <coughs> the Eagles, and the disinvitation. Well, Stuart, first of all, that monologue was spot on, my friend. I don't think I can add to that. I just want to give a little backdrop. Uh, behind the curtains of the NFL, this whole thing, our country is fighting for the heart and soul of our, of our country at this point. And for black conservatives, we're fighting for the heart and soul, the hopes and dreams of our, of our black kids. Uh, understand that the last eight years, here's something that we have to keep in mind that we, we should be demonstrating. 83% of black teen males in the last eight years have been unemployed. 75% of the black boys in the state of California last year could not pass standard reading and writing tests. We have 70% of black men that desert their families. Uh, black on black crime is through the roof. You know, one of the things that my parents taught us growing up uh, in the early days when we had a lot of pride in our country is you, you see an obstacle, you pray, you work, you, over, you, you serve and overcome that obstacle. Instead, we're now doing complaining and, uh, and, and pointing fingers. Uh, I'm in California right now. And I'm in California because I'm knocking on doors and making phone calls for a young man, Omar Navarro, who's going to be sending uh, Maxine Waters home finally. This is our problem. It's the black elitists. Not, not Donald Trump, not white Americans, not the flag, is these white elitists become wealthy with the misery of black, Amer um, black Americans. So if, he, if these young men want to help out, educate yourself, pull back, stop looking at BET, and understand that our enemy is an ideology. It's okay. not a color. Do, do, and if we start doing that, we can, we can start winning this thing. Do you sense any movement in the black community in terms of votes? Up until now, 90% of the black vote has gone to Democrats, 90% goes to Democrat presidential candidates. Do you think there's any shift in that? Bearing in mind what you're saying about the historically low level now under Trump of black unemployment. Yes, well, there, there's a lot of good news out there and blacks are finally hearing it. And yes, we are tr shifting. We, we went from, I think, 12% of black men uh, for candidate Trump to 22% now of, of, of black men that are, are rooting, rooting for President Trump. Yes, we are the greatest president, the greatest president that we had over the last few years is, is President Barack Obama. He, 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 he fell short in his promises and misery was at an all-time high and black Americans are waking up. I'm thankful, excited about someone who's drawn a line in the sand. We need to be proud of our country, uh, proud of our kids and let these kids know that this is the place to get it done. Let's not, let's not uh, put down opportunity that, that these, young, these young men are, are having and, and should be going out and telling other, our kids uh, that they can also ex experience. Yeah, get out there and play. That's what America wants. Burgess Owen, thanks, exactly. uh, thanks again for joining us this morning on a historic day. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it.